Mm -hmm. Hi there, and welcome to episode eight of Startup Disky's Full Tech Chat. My name's Bruce, and I'm joined by Dana and Jay. Welcome, guys. Howdy. Hi. Unfortunately, we won't be seeing Jay's face for today's show. He uh, went in for a spray tan, asked for subtle, but they misheard him and thought he said Trump. So he's going to be keeping a low <laughs> profile until things get back to normal. Now, today we are going to talk about gadgets. Now, before we go anywhere with this, what I would like to say to anyone watching this, we would love for you to put into the comments your definition of a gadget, because this is something we struggled with straight off the bat. Uh, we were saying, okay, gadgets, let's talk about gadgets. I only remember First, one of us struggling with it, really. Well, yes, in, in, in all honesty, there really <laughs> only was one of us that struggled. <laughs> so, under those circumstances, Jay, what's your definition of a gadget? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's too broad. And Hold on. You, you didn't help things by confusing me even more. Uh, like, um, oh, no, this is a gadget. But if you use it for work, it's not a gadget. It's a tool. But <laughs> no, it's, I don't know. Well, I'm, know I'm, I'm here to hopefully figure out what a gadget is by the time we hit stop recording. So I want to put a, put a situation out here, right? Okay. Now, Let's imagine, I don't know, it's the early 1900s or something like that, <laughs> and out comes the very first vacuum cleaner, right? The very first motorized vacuum cleaner. Up until this point, people have been using, you know, little dustpan and broom and stuff, you know, and they've now got the option to use a, a motorized vacuum cleaner. That is a gadget. But a vacuum cleaner is not a gadget anymore. Now it's just a piece of cleaning equipment. But at the time, it was a new way of doing things, a way of doing things easier, sort of a little tool that came out and was a little bit easier for them. And so for me, my idea is that a gadget is something that it's going to make a job or a task easier uh, and it's, it's a relatively new thing. See, a vacuum cleaner I no longer consider to be a gadget, but I do consider like a a robot vacuum cleaner like those Roomba things, I yes. consider them a gadget because they're still a relative. And they they don't they haven't really revolutionized anything with a Roomba. It's just a vacuum cleaner that wanders around on its own. Um, oh no, it's it can, revolutionized. It it scans really your house and sells the information to whoever <laughs> manufactured it. <laughs> Very advanced. But now by that logic, the first excavator or crane was a gadget. I thought gadgets were small. I mean, I don't consider the first vacuum a gadget. I don't. Is I that... don't think they have to be small. Uh, now you know, you're just making it worse. It's a definition here. A See, mechanical this... truck contrivance or device, any ingenious article. Oh yeah, so that's that, that's helpful. That uh, for me contradicts. If it's a contrivance, who's ever heard of an ingenious contrivance? When something is contrived, <laughs> it's not ingenious. Do you have to look up contrivance now. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, so, you know, I mean, okay, so if you do a search on the interwebs and you just say top gadgets of 2023, you know, you're going to get websites full of, you know, just shit. Uh, most of it is going to be stuff that's not really that much use. Okay, here's another one. Here's another one for you. <laughs> Once upon a time, when people wanted to do any calculating of stuff, they would either do it in their head or they would use a slide rule, abacus. maybe even an abacus. And then all of a sudden, we have these things called pocket calculators. Mm -hmm. Now, my grandfather, he owned one of the first pocket calculators you could get hold of. And at the time, it didn't even have a decimal point. You could add, um, divide, multiply, subtract. But it could only do it with whole numbers; wouldn't do it with um, with uh, you know decimals. Now, um, that you know, you could look at it and you could say, "Well, what do I need that for? I, I can calculate things using a piece of paper, or I can calculate them in my head, or I can calculate them with a slide rule. Uh, what do I need this calculator for? Well, it makes things a little bit easier. You know, it, it saves you from having to use your brain, I guess. So to some extent, I consider that like when they first came out, a pocket calculator would have been a gadget. But is a pocket calculator a gadget anymore? Mm. No. Not really. Let's, let's try one of these because maybe we can agree on something. Okay. Which, which one do we like? A small specialized mechanical electrical device. A contri so again, there's contrivance again. Fair enough. I, think I don't even know name what that word means. 
Well, I think you're attributing a negative definition to contrived than or, or to contrivance than it necessarily has to have. Well, it does to me. <laughs> um, a thing whose name cannot be remembered, thingamajig doohickey. Fair enough. That's that's a different definition. Any device or machine, gadget, especially gadget. those whose name cannot be recalled. Yeah. No. Okay. So, really, number one is the 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 you know the way we're using it. Anyway. Yeah. So nobody really knows what a gadget is. No. No. Gadget. What makes this a gadget and that not a gadget? That sort of thing. So that where I caused confusion for Jay before was when I was sort of saying. Uh, I don't know. You take a, I don't know, one of those cameras on a friggin', you know what they call those endoscope cameras. You know those cameras and that. If you have one of those and you're using it, I don't know, just at home, it's a gadget. But if you hand that to a plumber who's actually checking to see if there are any cracks in the pipes, that's a tool. Then it's not really a gadget anymore. It can be but both. <laughs> it can. Like my wife had an example. We were discussing this over dinner, and hmm. she's like, "No, no, just." Think of Inspector Gadget, all the shit that comes out of I'd his hat. Like, it's like, Inspector Gadget. So I'm like, <laughs> he is a gadget. No, just because he has an umbrella come out of his head doesn't mean that the umbrella is a gadget. It's still an umbrella. But I think we would all have to agree that that was one of the best uh, movie vehicles for Matthew Broderick ever. Don't you think? <laughs> um, you know, I never I mean, saw it. It's there's there's I mean it's got it's either got to be that or Godzilla. It's got to be one of those two. Uh, <laughs> I saw Godzilla. I did not see Inspector Gadget. No, I haven't seen it either. But that's because don't, I was a don't grown, do it was, now. Yeah, I was a grown up when I came out when it came out. So, you know. <laughs> so we uh, can uh, we can just agree on not knowing exactly what a gadget is and just kind of talk about what we think so. What we think are yeah. gadgets. So here's here's the way I define it. it's it's an, uh, a device, usually mechanical or electronic, that makes your that you don't have to have, but it makes certain things easier. Yeah, that's and what it's I not would... necessarily cla- and it's not classified as a tool. Like like okay, so you can either get a, a ratchet and socket set. And do it by hand, you know, you crank it by hand, or you can get an impact wrench and put a socket on it, and it'd be done in a fraction of the time. Does that make it a gadget? No, because it's a tool. It's all they're both tools. A gadget for me, like, oh, here's an example of a gadget. Ethernet cable te- tester. You can you can test cables on your own and and figure out whether they're good or bad, and then you can do the troubleshooting with the wires and figure out where exactly the problem lies, or you can put this on it and be done in 30 30 seconds. So Yeah, but because you're using it, it's a gadget. But an IT professional that uses that daily, it's a tool. Okay. So that didn't really help anything. (laughs) (laughs) If you use it every day, like as a part of your, your vocation... Then sure, it's a tool, but I don't use it every day, so it's a gadget. It's just something that makes troubleshooting yeah. easier. Okay, who, is whoever is yeah. watching at this point has surely tuned out by now. <laughs> no, no, I definitely, think, I definitely think you are onto something there, Dana. I definitely think that it is something that you don't have to have, but it it can potentially make your life a little bit easier. So, so I, a pacemaker think- is never a gadget. No. No, even though it's a tiny electronic thingamajig. Yeah, but you have to have it or you die. (laughs) So (laughs) you might be a little uncomfortable. (laughs) Well, yeah, that's a good point. It's a good. It's actually because I, you know, if if I had a pacemaker installed because every once in a while you want a little thrill, then it's a (laughs) gadget. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, if I if I had a pacemaker, I, I I would probably say, "Hey, I've got this little gadget in me." I would probably say something like that. Yeah. See. Yeah, but uh, that's that's the definition of like thingamajig. Yeah. Thingamajig. Fuck it. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, I guess you know probably we should. I think there are a couple of things that we need to talk about. First of all, we need to talk about. Some of our preferred gadgets, gadgets that we like, we we use that are in our homes, um, and then I guess we'll probably talk about some of the um, gadgets, other gadgets that are out there that we may not necessarily have, and 
um, probably talk about things which once upon a time were referred to as a gadget, but now we don't really consider them that uh, anymore because they are just part of everyone's everyday life. So, uh, yeah. uh, look, just, I'm going to start this off with Jay um, because he deserves it. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell me a little bit about uh, some of the the gadgets that you have and like. And if you need some time to load up some screen snaps and things, just let me know. Yeah, I haven't pulled anything up yet. I thought I was going last. Okay, Dana, <laughs> tell us. I was just going to pull screens up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll go first then. Um, <laughs> so some of the gadgets that I have, and again, some of these is a bit of a, you know, there's a bit of a gray area as to whether we're talking about a gadget or we're talking about a tool. But one of the ones that um, I have is like a little thermal camera. Uh, it's a little Fleur thermal camera, uh, Fleur 1. Um, and you plug it onto the bottom of your iPhone or your Android, you load up some software, and it has a little camera on it that allows you to see uh, thermal imaging on your phone screen and the thing about these is that ultimately they are a gadget but at the same time what they do you can't really do with it by any other means um, if you're wanting to use a thermal camera to maybe detect where your house isn't particularly well insulated maybe in the cold you want to see where cold's coming in around doors and windows or something like that or you know sort of where it's going to be where sort of you know heat might be escaping um, when you're trying to warm your house or cool your house, whatever. Um, the, they're a, a very, very practical thing. And as I say, you can't really do that sort of stuff via any other means. They're the most efficient way of being able to find out, you know, just being able to visually just see that um, that, that temperature change. But that's one that I have, and I also use that for um, computer repair because I can see if things maybe something's got a short a bit of a short circuit on it and i can see things getting hot that shouldn't be getting hot and you can go that's the thing that's the thing that's broken let's rip it off and put on a new one uh so a thermal camera i definitely consider to be a gadget um although it de definitely is also a tool so um i'll probably put a link into the little fleur camera the only thing i don't like about it is it has its own battery rather than drawing power from the phone and it's like a tiny weeny little freaking hummingbird battery that lasts for like about eight seconds and then you have to recharge it so that's the only thing i don't like okay. so this this is a gadget and this is definitely a gadget it's not anything like a tool or anything like that it is a gadget this is a thing called a zanko tiny t2 cell phone, or as we call them here in Australia, a mobile phone. Um, this is a fully functional 3G phone. And for people who will be going, oh, what use is that? They're shutting down the 3G network. The 3G network is still active here in Australia. I don't know how much longer it will be active for. I mean, we're all using 5G here, but they're keeping the 3G alive for now. But this is a fully functional 3G phone. And yes, it does actually work. And it's surprisingly clear as well to, uh, in terms of people hearing what you're saying and you hearing what other people are saying. Uh, it's quite amazing. It's more like a, an old Motorola phone in terms of if you're wanting to do texting for those who are old enough to remember. It does have a little camera in it. Uh, it does have a little flashlight in it. Uh, it ha you can put a little micro SD card in it to store your photos. You can put music on here and it works as an MP3 player. It's got a headphone socket on the top. Not even my freaking iPhone has that. Um, so this is um, something that I bought simply because I like it. There's no practical purpose for it um, in terms of, you know, um, I, am I ever going to rely on this for making a phone call? Probably not. I've got my iPhone with me all the time. But I just like the pure gadgetry of it, that it is so small, that it is functional. And this is yeah. where – this is, this is for me, this is, it's almost like genetic. It's like it's, 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 it's in my bones. I, I, I see something like this. I have to buy it. I have to own it. Um, it's so, a big little thing. It is rather cute. It is rather cute. It actually, you can actually insert it in your nostril if you try hard enough. Um, <laughs> I went away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've got a, a, a couple of other little 
you know, bits and pieces that, again, that I consider to be, you know, sort of fun gadgets. I use a white noise machine for sleeping, and it's just basically a little box with a speaker on it. You can choose different sounds. You can have it sound like an ocean, or you can have it sound like a fan or a storm or wind or whatever you want. I have it just sounding like a uh, like a mechanical fan. And uh, you just press a button, and it comes on, and it just has this white noise in the background, and I find that very good for sleeping. Um mm. Can I sleep without it? Probably yes. So that's why it's a gadget. Um, but it is something that I think does make me sleep better. Um, what else? Um, doorbell camera? Mm. Is that is that security equipment or is that a gadget? Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, <laughs> what do you use it for besides <laughs> home security? Uh, I use it uh, to see when someone's delivering a package. Okay. So it's like, oh, there's a package being delivered. There's a package, yeah. <laughs> um, I've got another gadget here, which <laughs> uh, is going to trigger Jay. It is just full on going to trigger him. Um, I've got a thing here called an IOD ST400. <laughs> and... This is actually a really nifty little thing in my in my opinion. So what this is, it's a hard drive enclosure. I'm just going to open the fucker up. There we go. Inside here. <laughs> it's really easy to use. <laughs> here we have inside. I'm sorry. Inside. There is, that is a, an SSD drive. It's just your Crucial. standard SATA. Uh, SATA SSD drive. Okay, there it is. This is a one terabyte, and it just slots into here, and this is effectively a hard drive enclosure. And if you want to, you can use it as nothing but a hard drive enclosure. Just plug it into your computer, drive pop, pops up, there you go. Um, but it has this little keypad on the front here, and when you power it up, this little LED display comes up as well. This keypad here, and so here's some of the things you can do with this. First of all, you can set up this drive to be encrypted. So if you wanted to plug this in and read data off it, you actually need to put in a pin here in order to make it mount onto the computer. So it starts being, you know, you can keep your bitcoins and things on there. Um, so for safeties and that. So you, you've got the ability to do that. But the main thing that I really like about this, main reason I use it for, is that you can actually place disk images on this drive. And then you can set them up to be a separate drive to be mounted. So in theory, I can have this drive formatted. I can copy, I don't know, 100 separate disk images on there. And then I can just select one, whichever one I want, plug it in. And what mounts is the disk image as if it is a real physical drive on my computer. It's quite fast as well. And, uh, and I use that for the computer IT techie type stuff that I do because if I'm wanting to um, install an operating system on an old computer, I've got every single Mac OS X installer on this as a separate disk image. So I can just go in here and go, oh, I want to install uh, Mojave. And then I mount it Mojave. and, and Mojave comes up on there and I can install, I can, you know, and sort there. So, and I can put diagnostics tools on here. I can make bootable partitions in different operating systems. So again, if I go in and pull out a computer that's really old and I need to load up El Capitan or something, I can just select El Capitan on this and then load it up and away you go. So very, very handy little thing. I definitely consider this to be a gadget because again, I, it's not necessary. I could just do them using a whole bunch of little, USB sticks, if I wanted, have a separate thing in, on, on a... No, on, that on that a, qualifies as a gadget. I mean, on paper, yeah. it's a gadget. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, in real life, it's the biggest piece of shit I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> That's neither here nor there. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's, it's definitely... It, it, there's been a slight cooperation issue with, um, with the ST400 and Jay's experience. The ST400 is definitely, or has definitely been giving Jay the middle finger in a big way. Um, but I think that's mainly because he's doing it wrong. So. Fuck all that. I'm not doing anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you load up 500 gigabytes of disk images that you spent a week creating. You run to a computer when you need it. You select it, says... It's fragmented. Yeah. 
the hell does that mean? <laughs> Can't defragment yeah. it because it's an SSD. Give me a break. Well, you could try. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, that is definitely a flaw in the way that it works. They need to, I think they need to do something about that. But uh, so far, uh, ever since discovering that fragmentation issue, I have been able to avoid it. So it, it's the best idea I've purchased mm. this year. Or was it last <laughs> year? I don't remember, but it's the worst product. Yeah. It's um, now behind a, behind a shelving rack somewhere. So <laughs> I'll find it someday. <laughs> Okay, so which of you guys has some? Well, it might come back to me, and we'll do. I'll do a couple of gadgets later on. But who of you guys have something queued up, ready to go? I think we both do. There you go. Okay, there we go. Okay, Jay's gone first. Boom. Boom. Terminal. Yeah, I am prepared now. Um, yeah, this is a little thermal imaging camera that connects straight to your phone, kind of the same as what Bruce uh, <clears throat> mentioned, just a different brand. He has uh, what was it? Fleur. Fleur. Uh, Mm -hmm. um, so yeah I use this for board repairs for finding uh, leaks in my house when there's cold air coming in makes it really easy to see uh, where it's coming from and all that uh, really nifty I use it a lot next up we have a laser level that mm. as soon as you turn it on it kind of suction cups itself to the wall mm -hmm. and you can just have it hanging there and you know you can you can level stuff and uh, in a house that's 100 years old, you use this a lot more often than you think. Because <laughs> nothing is level. So you just use it for, for, for what, hanging pictures and things like that? Yeah, if you want to hang up a shelf or make sure all the pictures are lined up uh, when you put the hooks in, all that stuff. Or when you can't find a cat toy, you grab this. <laughs> I've got a question for you. Yeah. So this is got, I see it has a spirit level in there, so you can make sure you get this level. Yeah. Yeah. What if the house? What if the house isn't level? Then whatever's on the wall will be level. <laughs> Fair enough. It'll stick out yeah. like dog's balls, but it'll be level. You'll know it's level. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, this was uh, part of the discussion we had offline. It's a tiny ultrasonic cleaner, most mm. commonly used for uh, jewelry and uh, whatever. I did not think that this was a gadget. But Bruce talked me into this being a catch. Mm. So here we go. I I, ha I keep this in my office. Uh, I got it for my wife, who never uses it. So I commandeered it, and I use it for tools and small stuff mm. on my workbench all the time. And it does a phenomenal job, uh, actually just as well as a $2,000 Crest Ultrasonic. This <laughs> works just as well. So. <laughs> well, the, it's, it's an interesting thing. So I definitely think that these little... Consumer level, <laughs> consumer level ultrasonic cleaners qualify as a gadget. And and because ultrasonic cleaners have existed for a really long time, they've been around, but they've been used mainly by businesses. You know, uh, mechanics use them for cleaning fuel injectors and stuff like that. Um, but the these consumer level ones, the little ones that you can buy, you know, just a you know normal re electronic retailers and stuff, uh, electrical retailers. It's the exact same technology, just because it's tiny, makes it yeah, a gadget. It's, it's what's no, it's just it's been turned into a little kind of consumer level contrivance. Um, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's um. You know, this is something that has been made specifically so that it can only do little tiny things like jewellery or spectacles, watch bands, you know, that sort of stuff. It can't do big things. It can really only do those small things. And they've bundled it up, bundled it up into a little, you know, consumer-level thing at a consumer-level price tag. Um, and it, it, I don't know, it just it's, it seems to be a big thing. At the moment, I was at, at the, um, a, you know, electronic store just the other day. Someone just walked in and, you know, just went straight up to the counter and said, you know, where are your ultrasonic cleaners? And I thought to myself, you know, there was a time when people didn't even know what one was. Yeah. Um, and now, did you uh, it, did you intercept that person? And look, you, I, you can make I your own. Bloody I think. <laughs> <laughs> I felt I like this, walking. I, have this I felt video. like walking up to him and saying, "These guys don't know shit." You want us to ask a question about an ultrasonic cleaner? Come to me, okay? Um, <laughs> um, so. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I definitely consider them to be a gadget. Yeah, okay. look at that. Yeah, this probably. one Where, um, saved my uh, saved my butt today. Uh, we went <laughs> to the grocery store, uh, couldn't unlock the car. We had to do the 
use the actual key to get in. <gasps> Find out oh. the battery died. Uh, Good thing you don't have a Tesla. We we, uh, we left something plugged in that shouldn't have been plugged in. And then I remembered, hey, I got one of these in the pocket of my back seat. Hooked it up. It's been in the car for over a year uh, through really cold uh, winter days. Really? That Still long? had a full charge. Yeah. I thought you just got it in the summer. Uh, what was it? July last year? Yeah. So, well, almost a year. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> just, just over half a year. <laughs> so it's been in the car, neglected, forgotten, cold, wet. Still had a full charge. Why is it Popped wet the hood, in the car? Hooked it up. Uh, my wife left something in there that froze and popped, and now it's wet everywhere. But oh, that's nice. What's with all the questions, man? Just let me tell my story. I, most people Jeez. don't say the inside of their car is wet, is all I'm saying. My car <laughs> is, okay? <laughs> is it raining in there? What's going on? Anyway, hooked it up, started the car, problem solved. So uh, this is, I believe, the, the smallest version that they make. And there's a million brands like it out there. Mm. But uh, this one tested really well in, uh, what's that YouTube channel? Project Farm. He tested this, came out oh, really yeah. well. Yeah, so. I'll um I'll put a link uh into that video because it is very interesting. And it's also been an absolute pain in the ass because he reviewed a whole bunch of these and I'm like, yep, that's the one I want. And ever since his video has come out, I have been unable to buy it because it's been currently <laughs> unavailable. Yeah. So um I'm just at this stage waiting for stock to come back. This has been since like freaking Christmas and it's now February. So um, I, I really – look, I have one of these in my car. Mine's a much, much smaller one. It still works. It starts a V6 quite happily if you – you know, if the battery's flat. It does not do so well on my sort of 383 big block V8 in my Dodge, uh, my 1970 Dodge. So it, when I hook it up to that, uh, things start melting and smoking and stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, when you when you are buying these things, they have um, they have a rating of the like their what is the maximum output or in a battery yeah. you'd call them like the cold cranking amp. So in other words, what is the maximum amount of output you can get from them in a burst? Now the one that I have, I mean, if you want to use it to charge a phone or something, you probably be able to charge twenty phones from it. It's a big battery pack, but um, it's. And it, as I say, it will quite happily start a four or a six cylinder car, but yeah. it does definitely struggle on the big on the big V eight. So um, I am actually in the market for a new one, but as I said, so f I still have not been able to get one. So I just I'll sell you mine four hundred dollars. Do you take Amazon gift cards? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I saw um, a, a review. Um, I was looking at like like Google News or something the other day for whatever reason. Why? There was there was somebody had done like like consumer reports or somebody had done a a test of these types of devices and this one is the one that won the Noco. It wasn't okay. necessarily this specific one but it was one of theirs. And huh. it was yeah, and shoulders above the rest. I got this one because you Not know, I have a, a four cylinder Mazda. You know, this is more than enough for for our mm -hmm. Mazda for my tractor and for my generator if I need it. But, mm -hmm. yeah, if you drive an F, whatever, 50, get something bigger. Yeah. Well, the the one that I am looking for, it's called, I think it's the JA302. It's a, by a brand called Loki Thor. Easy to remember because they're the <laughs> Loki Thor. Brothers, you know, brothers from Loki and made Thor. by some Marvel fan in China. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. But anyhow, the reason why I like it is because this one is not only is it very powerful jump starter, it also has a little LED readout of how much power is in it and how much power is being used to start it. So when you plug it in to go, yeah, you know, turn something over, it's telling you how many amps are being pulled. And I think that's a nice thing to be able to see as well. But the other thing I really like about this particular one is it's got an air compressor built in. So you can grab it out of the, the trunk of your car. You can go around and pump up your tires without having a cable running all over the place. How big is the thing? It's got an air compressor. <laughs> <laughs> you, know why my, you know why mine is be better than yours? <laughs> I'm going to see if I can find it. You're going to be waiting a while for it to pump up your tire if it's all the size it is. <laughs> I mean, the well, compressor. What, 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 makes the, what makes the NOCO better? Is it's actually available for purchase? Yeah. No. So, 
Well, look, here's the thing. You can buy these. They are available, but you have to buy them from Loki Thor. And I am in a situation at the moment where I have some uh, Amazon gift cards. And so I mm. want I want the... Uh, the no-go? The uh, Amazon to get it. No, thanks. Okay, so I'm just going to very quickly show you. This is the one because there are all these questions about it. This is it here. So it has little air compressor tucked into the back here. Huh. It has your little readout on the on the. This is your readout here. There's your little thingy. It's got a great big flashy LED, LED flashy flashy bank. thing. Yep. So you got that, and it has on it as well. So uh, eight point five liters. Look at that. See, mine's only six point three. Have a look at it. Look at that. How good is it? <laughs> and then um, it's a sticker. Uh, it's got. It's got. I'm sure it's got plugs on it as well, so you can plug in USB. Yeah, devices. it probably does. It's just a sticker on the front. It doesn't actually tell you anything. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So anyhow, they're two hundred and twenty US dollars, or on Amazon, currently unavailable. Nice. Anyhow, that definitely qualifies as a gadget. Yeah, I'd say so. And yeah, th this one too has USB out. You can charge your phone or tablet. It has a flashlight on this side, which you can't see. It, it's nice, and everybody should have one of these, in my opinion. I agree. Anyone who, well, unless you own a, don't own a car. If you don't own a car, I don't see much point. But if you own a car, I think yeah. everyone should. What the fuck is my that? next gadget? This is a little <laughs> thingy. When you're done brushing your teeth, if you have teeth. You brush them, and then you put your brush in here, and there's a little UV light here that sanitizes your toothbrush. Do you recommend these for anybody that actually has teeth? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So. There is a, There was a study recently about um, toothbrushes teeth? that uh, yeah. that were being left out, in, you know, in a bathroom. So if they're sitting in a bathroom, maybe on the sink, uh, with you know, in a jar or something like that. If it is a yeah. bathroom that shares the same space with the toilet. Yeah. Um, there's some uh, awful floaty things around getting onto your toothbrush. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And e even though I use one of these, um, and I have my water heater set to 65 degrees Celsius, which is hotter than most people keep it, but like, I use that uh, quite frequently to. Yeah, yeah, to clean out these brushes yeah. as well. There are actually laws in this country about the maximum temperature. Um, particularly in a bathroom, in a bathroom. So there is a maximum, you can't have water over a certain temperature in a bathroom for fear of um, scalding the youngsters. And I have to say that I am not actually a fan of that. And my apologies to anyone who might be watching this and saying, you are just an inconsiderate bastard. But I do not have any children in this house. And I yeah. like really freaking hot water. <laughs> I have a kid running around in this house and mm. he was taught, Hot water hurts. Yeah. And if he ever chooses to ignore that advice, he'll find out soon enough and learn for the, the rest of his age, life. It's his finger hurts. Touch. <laughs> These laws aren't aimed at his age, though. They're aimed at much, much, much younger. Babies. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well. Uh, but anyhow, look. How, yeah. many, how many babies are crawling up under the sink and turning on the hot water? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. What's Is that a toaster? What's that? Yes. Uh, you put it's your... You put you input the temperature here. You lay a piece of bread on this piece of glass here, and then it warms up and toast it. And if you want peanut butter, jelly, you know whatever, it comes out of this knob. Comes out the top. Yeah, yeah. So it only has a hint of a plasticky taste. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, three D printer. Uh, this is my Ender three. Um, there are many brands out there, many different types. If you want to learn more about this, watch our last episode. Talk yeah. all about it. Yeah. Nice little uh, segue there. I like it. Yeah, but um, I definitely consider this a gadget. Uh, it can very well be a tool if you're into prototyping and all that stuff as well. So, yeah, the line is a little yeah. blurred there yeah. as well. But. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, look, if, if you're getting a 3D printer and you're using it to print out, uh, I don't know, T Rex heads and, you know, uh, Terminator heads and yeah. uh, I don't know little miniatures and stuff like that. I can see it. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're using this to uh, to you know as part of running a business or as as you say prototyping things, you know, um, then I can I, I definitely see it as as a tool rather than a. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, I, one of the main things I use mine for is printing out brackets brackets for sorry brackets or enclosures for electronic devices that i sell so in that regard it's very much a tool because i'm actually using it to make you know enclosures i don't have any here i'll show you oh yeah i do here we go so here's one here's one that i made earlier and it, this is it, it's missing the lid but this is an enclosure for a blue scuzzy external db25 thingy um for thingy and this uh and so that you know printing this out and that, which is then going to go over a device that i sell online is very much a tool but at the same time i still also do consider it a bit of a gadget so you, you printed a gadget using a gadget for a gadget hey how about that hey dang <laughs> gadget inception <laughs> uh, i got these for christmas from my wife and they are the most amazing Gadgets I've about ever those. had. That's yeah. that's interesting you say that because they look like the stupidest thing ever invented. They but they're are. actually good, are they? They are really, really stupid, but very effective. <laughs> I would imagine if you're reaching into like you're working on an engine or something and you're getting your hands into a tight space and you need both hands and you can't hold a light and you don't have a tripod like Grudy, just those would be perfect. Yeah, it, it's fantastic. I, I use them a lot more than I ever thought I would. So, uh, yeah. And links to all this stuff will be in the description. I don't even know what they're called officially. Uh, <laughs> maybe it's in the link. LED Twink flashlight glove, outdoor fishing glove. No, that's not it. <laughs> they're called Twinkle Fingers. Just there on, you go. Know, look for, look for you know, outdoor lighting gloves, flashlight gloves, yeah. something like that. Yeah. How, how long they will last? I don't know because this is the thinnest fabric I've ever, you know. So I don't know how long yeah. it's going to last. But it's very convenient. Are they, are they rechargeable, or do you have to put new batteries in? Uh, you have to put new batteries in. They take uh, two little coins. Uh, okay, yeah. cool. I've seen ones with lights in the uh, peak, you know, brim, whatever you call the thing, yeah. of cap. So, mm -hmm. like, you, like that, you use them if you're barbecuing or something like that. You have little lights coming out of the cap, and I've seen some with lights coming out of spectacles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but it's nifty. <laughs> Hasn't haven't LEDs made a change to the world? Oh, that is just a waste of time. <laughs> this is incredible. It's incredible. Apple you want to eat an apple, but you don't want to cut it and take the seeds out and all that stuff. Wham! Apple done. <laughs> Start chewing, which I can't currently do, but usually, yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> These things are awesome, and this is a gadget. Gosh, that um, Go that ahead, just Bruce. seems. Bruce no, isn't look, a fan. It just reminds me. Of, I I was at a um, like a kitchen supplies store, you know, a store that was just selling stuff for the kitchen, and there was so much stuff in there that I just thought, this is the dumbest thing ever. So they had a whole bunch of containers. <laughs> they had these containers that you put, like, let's say you have an orange and you cut it in half, and you only use half the orange, so you get the other half the orange and you put it in this container and put it in the fridge to keep it fresh for when you're ready to eat. Who uses half. half an orange? <laughs> but what, maybe it's an avocado, but whatever. The point is, the point is, the container was actually the item. So the container was shaped and looked like a little orange. So you put your orange in an orange container. There was a lemon one, looked like a lemon, and you put your lemon into the one that looks like a lemon. So I said to the lady, I said, look, if I buy this orange one and I put a lemon in it, Will it stay a lemon or will it become an orange? <laughs> and you know what her response was? She says, it's okay. We have lemon ones as well. <laughs> it, it, uh, it, that appeals to the old game that we played when we were kids, like put the square peg in the square hole and the round peg in the round hole. And, yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, for a master chef like Bruce, like you give the guy a toothpick, <laughs> he'll make you a five star meal. I don't know how, but he does. For me, a simple pleb, this is fucking fantastic. Uh, well, I'll, you know what? I have one of those. I just don't eat apples anymore. So 
I am going to uh, I'm going to give that a try. I'm going to go buy one of those on your recommendation, Jay. Yeah, and I'm going to see how it goes. So, well, you I know have how, one you with know how uh, it works, right? <laughs> yeah, you throw it at the apple. Does it have Does it have instructions? That you don't comes just with set the apple on top and expect it to cut it for you. You have to actually push it down. <laughs> oh God, is that? Oh, hello. My Apple okay. Watch, definitely a gadget. Yeah, I see the Apple tie-in. <laughs> nah. So, you know, it's an interesting thing because the thing is that the, an Apple Watch is. Uh, it is generally regarded as the most popular um, fitness tracker out there because obviously we have, you know, you remember the old Fitbits in the olden days and then you've got the Garmin, yeah. you, know, the, you know, the Garmin brand, whatever. And uh, and then the Apple Watch came out and and Apple the Apple Watch quite quickly ended up getting the, um, the reputation as the most popular fitness tracker. But the funny thing is that the, while I do consider the Apple Watch is a fitness tracker, it does a lot more than that. Um, so I just, it's, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's totally not necessary. Yeah. I mean, one of the requirements that I would say a gadget makes a gadget a gadget is it's usually cheap and like in quality and cheap in price, which mm -hmm. of course the Apple Watch absolutely isn't. <laughs> but I still consider it a gadget. Yeah, yeah. You don't have yeah. to have it, but yeah. Um, yeah. I uh, there ha there has mine, been a time there. <laughs> once <laughs> there was a time. Yeah, they work well over there, don't they? Um, <laughs> <laughs> there was a time once I can't even remember when it was, but I was I had my Apple Watch on and a notification came up, and I went to go check the time, and there was a notification, and nowhere on the watch face was the time mm -hmm. and and i thought to myself that has got to be like an absolute fail for a watch that if i go to check the time and i can't actually see the time i can see all sorts of other things on there but <laughs> it's the time. a watch yeah, that's <laughs> right. the first thing it should tell you <laughs> um but yeah i did you know i definitely think that they're a gadget i mean at the end of the day you do not, and, and i mean look watches like the very first digital watch that's a gadget the very first fob watch the first pocket watch i mean it's like we used to tell the time off the the big grandfather clock on the wall or the clock at the train station or something mm. and then all of a sudden you're that's able to fun. actually take you can take one around with you in a little pocket watch and it's like that would have been a gadget back in the day mm. so yeah um but i mean i just think of all the old you know the old digital watches particularly from like the 80s era that had you know games on them and stuff like that and uh you know, and and they were definitely gadgety. And they were very probably gadgety. the reason I wear glasses today. All those tiny LCDs with games. Yeah, on. probably. <laughs> um, the last one that I could think of is, um, and this is not the one I have. It's just the first one I found a picture of. Uh, a little battery-operated grinding pen. I used mine for grinding down traces on boards. I could put a little drill on it and drill tiny holes, and it's just uh, like a miniature Dremel. Yeah, so like, yeah, sort of much lighter, lighter and easier to transport Dremel. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. Is the Dremel a gadget? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, nah, definitely. It's a, a, a gadgety tool. <laughs> oh hell no, we're not going there. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> yeah, let's just keep going with those. Um, those were my gadgets. I probably have a lot more that I'm not realizing fit into the gadget category but uh, yeah those are my uh, my top contenders okay well i think they're all they're all very good contenders um so dana i guess that means it's your turn yes so here's my first one apple tv 4k mm -hmm. i consider it a gadget because i could buy cable or i could have this i much prefer this uh and of course it comes with all of the, uh, why is it not scrolling? Oh, wow, what did I just do? I was scrolling, but it's not scrolling. It's not updated. Uh, is it maybe because you're doing it on the wrong screen or something? No, sharing the window. Anyway, anyway, you get the idea. Apple TV 4K comes with Apple TV Plus. Um, and you can, I think you can play your Apple Arcade games on there, even though I don't have an account for that. Are they any um, good? 
What? Uh, the arcade game. So I've never played it. I don't it. know. I don't, I don't have an account for it. But I'm, I think you can. Oh, well, yeah. That's right there. The freaking joystick icon. Mm. <laughs> uh, music, uh, apps, Apple TV, all kinds of good stuff. Um, I, I believe it will even share media from your computer in the house. Probably has to be a Mac, though. I haven't tried that, but um, it's. I, I have very little problem with it at all. The only if, issue I've ever had with it was here recently. Uh, it did a system update. Actually, I think it was YouTube did the app, app update, and when I tried to log in, it had completely lost my login information, so I had to re-enter it. Yeah, we had that last you week. Yeah, you, you broke it. I didn't. Mama yes, Susan did. did. I've been considering <laughs> upgrading my Apple TV um, because the the one I have, I think the CPU is not really keeping up with the demands of my apps. Uh, but so weird. it has this new remote, and my kid plays a lot of games on that thing, and he uses the older glass remotes as a touchpad to control the game. And from what I heard, you can't do that anymore with the new remote. Is that true? I don't know. Huh. Me neither. I couldn't tell you. I've only ever had this one, so. I might know, but am refusing to tell you. Okay. Well, awesome. Steam Link, which coupled with the Steam Gamepad. So you can see here in, in this icon, this is the little gamepad right here. Um, mm -hmm. The Steam Link uh, will connect your computer uh, running Steam to your television. And so you can play games from your couch on your television. The games are running on your computer. Yeah. Works on Windows, works on Mac, works on Linux, huh. I believe. Oh, yep. Cool. Right By there. the way, that game, Firewatch, awesome game. Is it? Yeah. I don't know. Really cool. What, what's, it, what's it about? You, you watch Fire. Oh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Check it out. It's cool. Uh, anyway. Mike... Uh, Mike's uh, not not Mac Shack channel, but his game channel. He did one of uh, did he? Oh, he did okay. a live stream on this. And pretty cool. Do you actually fight the fire or? No, no, it's a uh, no. Just check it out. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm really so, yeah. selling it, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. iPad. So I have an iPad fifth gen. It's a little long in the tooth now, but it still works for everything. And all, all I use it for is just browsing, you know, maybe buying something on Amazon on the couch or in bed or whatever. I don't really, really I took it on vacation. Um, I mean, I, just, I don't use it for, I don't like produce anything. I don't do anything for work on it. So it's just a handy. Yeah, I mean, I use my iPad for browsing. Okay, browsing, checking messages, um, and watching movies. That's pretty much all I use. Yeah. Like when I took mine on vacation, when I went to Egypt last spring, I, I downloaded a bunch of uh, Netflix videos because I knew I wasn't going to find much to watch over there. <laughs> so, uh, that's yeah, racist, I, man. No, it's just a preference. <laughs> Their TV over there is very – so, okay, have you ever seen, like, the stereotypical Mexican uh, or la la Latino channel um, soap opera? Novela? Soap opera. Yeah, that's probably one of them. Everything's, like, so dramatic and overacted, and that's okay. the way a lot of their TV is over there. And it's it's kind of funny for a while, and then you're like, well, A, I can't understand you, and B, I don't care anymore. So um, – <laughs> Yeah, I downloaded a bunch of movies on the iPad, and that that, that helped. Um, okay, oh, oh, I could not live without this. What the? F it's an air fryer. Oh. And most of them are like the the, the conical shaped things. It's got the little sh drawer in the front. You just yeah. slide it in and out. This one has the French doors on the front, um, and you can put all kinds of like. There's a basket. You can see there's the basket and then a couple of different kinds of trays. Um, it's got settings for you can you can actually use it as a mini oven and bake things or you can use the air fryer and get it done a lot quicker. It's Where do you put the oil for, in? There's no oil. 
It's uh, it's it's like a convection oven type thing. Sorry. So they don't it's actually, they don't actually fryer, like, use they don't use oil to fry. Yeah, see, air the air problem fryer. is the problem with an air fryer is that I don't have room on the counter for it. Um, I've only got enough room for yeah. one fryer, and I'd much prefer the one with the oil in it. This one is is fairly big as air fryers go, but that's because of the French door design. They're usually the the ones that you see more, more commonly, like the Ninja air fryers, where it's just like you know about that big, and it's got the one the one drawer in the front, like I said. Uh, when does a gadget become an appliance? That's an can appliance. They, can they be? Well, the same? I have a stove, but I use this instead. Okay. Because it's faster, it's more convenient, and mm. easier to clean, <laughs> frankly. Okay. Uh, okay, and then along the same lines is one of these Instant Pot pressure cooker. Oh, pressure cookers, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, you can cook rice, you can cook chicken, you can do an entire crock you... pot meal in a matter of like 70 or 80 minutes instead of waiting all day. I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not a chef by any stretch. So, um, whatever makes it easy and it's not fast mm. food, then this, this is perfect. Yeah, pressure cookers are an awesome thing. Awesome. This I use in my truck because, like Bruce, I have an old vehicle, and it just has a standard radio in it. It's got AM/FM cassette player. Um, this is not my daily driver, but this is my 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 truck um you plug the audio jack into your phone this one looks this this isn't mine but it's got similar similar bits to it mine plugs into the audio jack on my phone although <laughs> with the new the iphone i'm gonna have to get an adapter um, but what isn't it supposed to be bluetooth why do you have to plug anything in well the one i have does that it's the one i have okay. isn't bluetooth this is the only picture i could find that was ah, okay but yeah, I, I should probably get one of these because then it would work a lot better. It's got a microphone that you can clip on somewhere in the car, and you can basically use you can use hands free um, <clears throat> communication without having to hold your phone up or any of that stuff. I just thought it was neat because I use it in my old truck. And yeah, it's nifty. I mean, I, I don't know there'd be many people that know what a cassette tape is anymore, but I know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that like the save icon? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is, I'm using this right now. This is my vertical mouse. Um, I, I freaking love do this thing. I don't it's, know how you do um, it. It's actually kind of, it's backwards. There's the cable. So here's the buttons on the side, and then you got thumb buttons over here. But um, it just, it feels so much better on my wrist. Like, I even have a pad, like one of these that I put my wrist on. Um, if I use a... A, like a traditional mouse over time i just my the one like this right area right here on my wrist starts to hurt and with this thing i can use it all day and it doesn't bother me it is just the bizarrest looking thing in the world <laughs> you would yeah, think it like as soon as i started funky. using it i was like oh this is cool because the uh, the movements for, of your hand are pretty much the same except your hand is on its side it's kind of hard to describe, See, but I don't. I, I had no learning curve whatsoever. I was like, I, I started using it, and I was off and running. I don't move a mouse with my hand. I move a mouse with my fingers, and the heel of my hand is on the table. Well, that's what I mean. You you, you make the fine movements with your. But with this, you have to put your whole hand in the thing, so your hands lift it up off the table. I don't. I don't understand it. Mm, you know, yeah. Try one sometime. No, <laughs> no, I don't want to. This one. Haha. -ha. My laser disc player. <laughs> it's an old gadget. But uh, it is an old yeah, gadget. I, I, watch, I like watching laser discs. It's like so, a huge thing. For anyone who's watching this and isn't aware, the two things that never made it to Australia number one, eight track tapes. Number two, laser discs. Laser disc. So you will not find laser discs. You will not find laser disc players out here. I mean, unless someone has actually imported them out here. So. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they made their way to Europe either. At least my part of Europe. This is a similar model to mine, but it's not actually mine. But you can see, like somebody would look at that and go, "Oh, that's a CD player." No, no, <laughs> that's mm, the size yeah. of a vinyl record, but it looks like a CD. So, 
Yeah. It's probably a bunch of Gen Z people looking at that and going, what? How does that work? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I put a needle on it. Next. Oh, go there. You mentioned this earlier, the little robot mm. vacuum. I got one of these for Christmas, and it's fantastic. Now, the one I have doesn't, like, do the whole mapping thing, like it learns where your house is and stuff. It just kind of runs around and bumps into things until it runs out of battery and then goes back. But mm -hmm. this room is so small that it tends to get pretty much everything. And what it can't get in the corners, I can just grab a little broom and, and sweep out and then have it pick it up. <laughs> but um, I, had, I had to discontinue mine. I had a uh, Nito brand uh, one. <laughs> And Neat it's the same it. thing. It has uh, a big bumper on the front, and it just bumps into stuff to know, oh, there's a wall here. Or, yeah. You know. And so it turns it around does, and goes a different way. Yeah, it does have a motion sensor. So if you stand in front of it, it has. Uh, it doesn't have LiDAR. It's just real basic yeah. stuff. Um, and if you are in a house with stairs, you need to uh, double-sided tape a little magnetic strip at the top of your stairs. So it's yeah. like, ooh, magnetic strip. I should not go past this point yeah uh, the, the problem is but over time you know that adhesive kind of wears off and mm. someone might rip it loose and not tell you that they actually did it and before you know it you hear a whole bunch of ruckus and your vacuum cleaner is <laughs> at the bottom of the stairs in a million pieces so. the the image that i'm always reminded of whenever i see these things is someone who posted a photo on one of the social media things who was saying that like uh the accidentally left their dog locked in or something and the dog started to turn on the ground on the like a timber floor and then the vacuum thing has run into it and oh. then just smeared the <laughs> thing all over the floor. So then there's this this trail of smear yeah. left behind it everywhere. Just kept going because it didn't know, yeah. Oh, that's funny. I, I um, have seen that. That's hilarious. I expect that from Grudy's house. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> and also, since I had a kid, uh, you know, there's Legos, there's crap everywhere. Yeah. And using this would just not be a good idea, especially in my office. It would run into a cable or. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. This thing's fantastic because the only thing in here, like this, this room has laminate floor. Most of the upstairs of my house does not. So um, all it really needs to pick up is cat hair and like maybe if he tracks some little bits of cat litter into the room somewhere um, um it's interesting because the you know um there used to be little dust busters remember like little handheld oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah and they were pretty ineffective as far as handheld vacuum cleaners would go i mean yeah okay yes you could pick up a little bit of this and that but they weren't yeah. really that good um Light but stuff. i think they would definitely classify as a gadget but when you consider what has happened with you know cordless vacuum cleaners these days things like the dysons and stuff like that yeah. the level of suction the level of sucking power that those things have for a, a handheld are quite amazing and again i do consider them still a gadget if you're someone that has a, a handheld um yeah. you know, oh, sort yeah. of dyson i consider them a gadget so yeah one more and this oh. I, think, I use this thing all the time yep. and yeah and i don't have to because i could plug in drive into my mac pro but this is so much easier because it's right on my desk and i can eject it like any other disc um now Correct me if I'm wrong, but these were so okay. Just for people that are looking at this and going, "What the is that?" Um, these are I call them like a drive toaster, and that is that yeah. you can it looks you like can a toaster. Get a, a SATA drive, uh, a SATA hard drive, and you can just slot it into that, and it just clips in, and then this is connected mm -hmm. to your computer and allows you to virtually turn what would have been an internal drive into kind of like an external drive. So, yeah. uh, and it just they're just nice and convenient because you just put in the drive you want. But I've only got a single one. This is a double one. Uh, these yeah. actually give the ability to put two drives in and clone one to the With other. Direct copy, like yeah. yep. Sector copy, so you don't even need to format the other one. It just virtually. Does the whole so you thing can take a drive like this? Yes, that's you know, exactly right. And you know. just you just plug it in. So you know, the open spite spaces you see are for SSDs. And if you have a bigger platter drive, you that that rest of that is a little door and it opens up and you just mm. slide it in there and the light comes on and away you go. Have, yeah, they're fantastic. I I have one with uh, a fan mounted on the back to cool the drive because yeah. I I used to use them a lot for data recovery and they're fantastic. 
Bruce has got one, but it's this wide. one. Um, is as I say, it's just a single drive one. But it, uh, what I like about this one is it also has the old Firewire 800, which of course you don't see much these yeah. days. And for us old, old fashioned Mac users, we do like yeah. to have our Firewire. So, yeah. Yep. So that yeah, I, is my list. That is a great, a great good edge. list. It is. Man. Uh, I've got a couple more that I'm going to do. I've got pictures for them, so I'm just going to mm. go chair screen, entire screen, desk screen. There we go. And so this is a really cool one. So this is a label printer. It's Brother Brand, uh, and you oh. can see that this this has no keyboard. It has you know a lot of. If you think of like an old fashioned Dymo that you know you turn yeah. the little thing around and you click them, or then Which, later on they went to ones. Yeah. I also had a Dymo on my list. I just didn't find a yeah. picture of it, but I use that thing um, all the time. Uh, and then I've got another one, which is an Epson one, which actually has a keypad on it, and you can just add a little screen, and you can type into it. Mm. This one, as you can see, has no screen at all, and that's because this one works entirely via Bluetooth. Oh, so right. you can use your phone or your computer, and you literally just connect to this device. Then you have software that the that brother have provided that enables you to do all of your editing and stuff and you can bring in images you yeah. can um you can you can properly just design and lay out and it prints on uh, a, a label from i think about 12 mils up to about i don't know like 30 or 40 mils something like that and so you can print yourself quite complex little labels with logos and you know designs and images and stuff on there um and uh, and as i say it just sort of connects up to uh, to your phone or to your computer on your phone the editing tools are very basic on the computer you can do quite a lot so they're a, uh, a very good thing and look you know labels are just one of the best things ever i love labels i love labeling things i love things having labels on them um because i forget stuff so See, how, look at this how big of a label does it print is it like the, the typical little strip label it's it's it you can buy varying thicknesses of labels. So you can either just have them as like a little thin, thin one, yeah. like 20, you know, 12 mils or something. But I think they go all the way up to like 30 something mils or, or 30 or 40 mils. You probably don't know what that is. Um, You're talking about the thickness of the label or the width of the label? Width. Oh, width. thickness of the label. Yeah, it's just. Well, yeah, just, but I, I was talking about width, so, yeah. Yeah, width. So the width is like probably it goes up to about that size, but you do get you do get to put different size stuff That's in cool. it. So I, um, I have so, here a distant cousin uh, of that in my hand. Uh, you need to hold it with two hands. It takes eight batteries. There's a full <laughs> keyboard on it and a two line LCD, <laughs> and I use it almost daily. So this is the one that I have for. So this is an Epson one, and this has a keyboard on it, so you can just type what you want. That's pretty very sweet. very. This is very, very convenient because it's very quick and easy. You just basically, you know, <laughs> look at the green screen on these buttons. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, the, um, yeah, these, these are, you know, really quick and easy, convenient. You just want to punch out a fast label. That's the way to go. This one here, obviously, you've got a little bit more because you've got to kind of design it on your computer or whatever, but you can, you know, it's still quite handy. And with this one here, as you can see, that's the size of it. Oh. And it's... When you open it up, that's the little ribbon in there, and that kind of gives you an idea of the maximum width that it will do. Oh, okay. There, it's but hard to tell from that picture there. Because looking at that yeah. picture, I'm thinking, oh, this is like the size of a you know AirPods case. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's 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 a, it's a fair size unit, and oh, this man. is this is a 24 mil wide label. So that one is that you can see the width okay. there of that label. It's that 24 mil. That's why I'm letting you use pictures. I, I do think that's the widest it will do. I think it's 24 mils. So now that I look at it, and that's what I'm doing, looking at it. Now let's see if I put it back here. There we go. So I just thought I would show it because, as you say, that image doesn't give you any scale. Okay, so that's one that I think is a really handy gadget to have around the house. Every house should have labels. Now, this is a little passion of mine. Uh, <laughs> I have a bit of a thing for what we here in Australia call torches. Torches. And in, uh, in the US, I believe you guys call them a flashlight. Yep. Yeah. Now, this is all in Australian dollars, so just keep in mind that these prices you see here are, you know, in our uh, exorbitantly expensive money. So, Good um, But 
these, you know, we have, this is a company called Olite, and I own several Olite um, uh, flashlights. I have um, a, quite a big, I've got this guy here. This one is called a Intimidator 2. <laughs> um, Why? <laughs> um, and I have... Scary criminals. I have one that you can, you know, wear as a band on your head for, you know, if you're working under the house or something like that. And I've got a little tiny one, which is like a key ring type thing, and then and that's rechargeable. Uh, well, they're all rechargeable, I should say. And then um, and then I've got a mid size one, which is handy if you, you know, you're wanting a, a, a bright a bright flashlight, but you don't want to be lugging something heavy around. And I have to say, I just love these. And every time I jump onto this website, I am just like, oh, I want that one. And I want that one. And I want. I, I'm sorry, that. but can you explain what makes their flashlights so spectacular to warrant eight hundred dollars? Well, where was that one? That right one. Seven ninety nine. Does it? What What does it do apart from light up something? Does it make Julian fries? <laughs> Will it make me a sandwich? <laughs> well. Uh, I, I, I will confess that that does seem extravagant. <laughs> Seems uh, extravagant. Look, you have to wear a badass glove for the flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Jay's that's Jay's flashlight really glove. Nice. Comes in a case, man. Why? Look, it's uh, got molded molded to your hand shape and stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm all for a, a good flashlight, but that is extreme. Are you going to ask them? I was going to, but they're not Why available. Why is this shit so expensive? <laughs> Why is this torch $800? There you go. <laughs> now, it should be said, uh, which is something Bruce is probably not going to do, so I'll do it, that he has flashlights that if you aim them at the ocean, the water will boil. Uh, <laughs> the hotter the better. Lasers. Those are called like, lasers. Yeah, I mean, and look, so they... they um, they have the, this is the little rechargeable one I was telling you about. This little one in the top right hand corner with the unbelievably heavy JPEG compression. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, ones like this, these little ones, they're you know, and they come in different colors as well. The your yeah, flashlights still, come in different colors. Is this like the Apple, the Apple brand of flashlights? <laughs> it's a, <laughs> it, it is. It is a bit like that. It is a bit like that. Now, of course, keep in mind that if you were to go to the Olight uh america store you're going to see very very different prices let's let's do I, that now yeah. don't we you got to see yeah that right now that. like that same 700 dollars light is 35 bucks <laughs> yeah. oh, even still 80 dollars for a flashlight a little pen light like that's a little like laser guided that's, laser that's two. that's two you get two my, oh, my no, that cat one, yeah. would play with that <laughs> But trust me, tr one thing I can tell you with a, 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 an incredible level of certainty is these things are as bright as fuck. I mean, these things are so bright. I, I believe it. Um, and I've got, see this little parent. Hey, there's a the $20 thing. one. Goes on your Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So anyhow, uh, that's, they're, they're gadgety to me because at the end of the day, you can just go and get a, Regular, any old yeah. flashlight, you know. Um, I buy these ones because they're made incredibly well. They're really, really strong. Um, you know, I mean, the, the weight, the weight on this is just, you know, <laughs> pew pew. <laughs> pew, pew. <laughs> Bruce disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyhow, that's just one of my. That is that is a very much a personal gadget thing and i don't expect everyone to have the same level of you know weirdness uh and okay this is another one that which is a gadget but also fairly practical oh, yeah. so a lot of cars that well i think pretty much most cars these days have a little thing called an obd2 port mm -hmm. it's uh, something diagnostics open some i don't know it's a diagnostics so, a port on on a car and a lot of the time they're tucked underneath the steering wheel or somewhere like that and it's a little plug hole that, that mechanics in the past have been able to use. They can connect up their fancy pants um, device and essentially talk to your car's computer. Um, they can sort of find out, you know, if the engine light is on, why is the engine light on? Well, you know, what's what's the error that's surfaced? Well, these little tools allow you to actually take control of that yourself. So they've got these ones now where you plug the little plug onto the ODB 
OBD port. They're designed to stay on there all the time if you want. And they can then Bluetooth to your phone and they mm-hmm. can even give you live data while you're driving. They can show you yeah. how much oxygen is being consumed, how much fuel has been consumed, you know, all of this stuff that the car knows but doesn't necessarily show you on the dash. Mm-hmm. But more importantly, you can then go in and have a look at those error messages. And some of those, you, you might have an engine light on over just something, over nothing, over something just stupid. And you can look at the error and you can go, oh, pfft. That's for nothing, and you can just clear it so the engine light goes away again. Uh, or you might see that it is something fairly serious, and then you can, you know, take it to uh, the sharp. Um, I, but, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I, I've wanted one of these for a long time. Yeah. And I never really found a lot of use in them because when I started looking at them, they were very limited in what they could do. But this is years ago. Mm. Uh, have these gotten to a point where – even if there's nothing wrong, they can help me optimize things. Like, oh, the fuel consumption is kind of eh. Maybe I should have my injectors cleaned or something like that. Mm. Um, I mean, they can report on stuff that your car knows. You know, I mean, if your car knows that the injectors are clogged up, it will tell you the injectors are clogged up. You know, uh, you know, you can find that sort of information out as to whether they can detect if your car is running efficiently or more importantly make changes to the way your car runs to improve efficiency or something like that i honestly don't know i don't know i mean you can program cars you can you can tap into them program them you know i have a friend who actually does that and he changes the way the makeup of a you know sort of a car's you know the way it does things in terms of ratios of stuff and things and i don't understand it but uh, you can do that stuff, but I don't think these devices can. I don't think these devices will actually give you the ability to potentially damage your vehicle or stop your vehicle from working by you pressing the wrong button. Well, that's no fun. Yeah. But uh, with a price tag like this, and this is in Australian dollars even, Yeah, I'm willing to give one a try now. Yeah, I mean, look, what I will say about them is lots of these are shit. They are made like shit. They are flaky. The software has bugs. You know, a lot of them are shit. Now, this one here, I don't know. I've never tried this particular one. The one I have, because I do have one, it's it's kind of garbage. Um, and it's just the interface, the software is just really lacking. So, um, but, you know, I, I think there are, there are some good ones out there. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. shall investigate. Mm. Yep. Uh, so, look, uh, that's probably it for my list. I'm just going to have a quick look here and make sure that I've been able to. The only other one that I was going to mention, of course, is the earpods, the old Apple earpods. Um, you know, because yeah. really, at the end of the day, I'm wearing a set of headphones here at the moment. Are these a gadget? Probably not. But earpods, I consider, are a gadget uh, because, you know, it's. You, it's you're paying for the fact that they're convenient, they're small in size and everything like that. I mean, I never really thought that much of um, uh, earpods and AirPods ear, 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 until I used them. Um, I um, My wife actually got some and and I sort of tried them out. And I'm like, these are amazing. So I got some as well. So, <laughs> but definitely a gadget. They definitely qualify as a gadget. Yeah, um, I took a different approach. I got my wife new ones. Just so I could have her old ones. <laughs> so I didn't buy any for myself. What are you talking about? <laughs> that's, uh, that's not a bad one. So, all right. So I'm just going to move on to the next thing here. Uh, we, you know, we, we're probably going to wrap up fairly soon. But I just, um, um, I, I want to just run a couple of questions. These are just sort of discussion-y type questions. So, um, what do we consider? Um, are things that were once upon a time referred to as a gadget, but are now just part of everyday life and you wouldn't really call them a gadget anymore. Now, I gave an example before, like if we were talk about like the first vacuum cleaner that came out or the very first pocket watch that came out, you know, these things no longer classify as gadgets because they've just been in use so long that they're just part of our everyday life. Um, and, you know, what, do, do you guys have any examples of something that, you know, would have been a gadget once upon a time, but now is you wouldn't really consider it a gadget anymore? Um, we said cell phones, right? Yeah. Um, 
I'm we decided sure the game. I'm sure there's cell phones. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there's phone okay. I just, um, well, you know, a microwave. Yeah. That's a very good example. Yeah. Um, I, I knew someone who had uh, a mic, one of the first microwaves I had ever seen. Um, so this was, you know, at a time when microwaves just weren't in people's houses and this person had a microwave and that, that was a gadget. Uh, they had a soda stream as well. I considered that a gadget as well. So they could make their own fizzy drink. I was pretty envious. Um, but yeah, I think a microwave is a very good example. Um, what about you, Jay? Do you have an example? Do you have a good one? Uh, well, cell phones is the first one that came to mind, even though, uh, the dinner dinner table discussion. Nobody agreed with me that a cell phone was a gadget. So it it used to be a gadget, but definitely isn't anymore. So. Yeah, I think you could say the same thing about say an MP3 player or a digital camera. I mean, we have all these things which I definitely consider once upon a time were gadgets. I don't think a digital camera is really a gadget anymore because they have just become part of our lives. But of course, now that's become part of our phones. I mean, even like a webcam. That was a gadget once upon a time, but, I mean, they're just yeah. commonplace these days. So, Did you guys uh, in Australia, I know it was popular in, in Europe and here in America, it was called the Critter Cam, and that was before Logitech was a thing, and it was the oh, yeah. most hideous, worst quality camera you could ever hook up to yeah. a computer, but <laughs> they were so popular. I can't, <laughs> say, I can't say that I recall that. That doesn't mean it wasn't here, but... Laptop was probably a gadget once upon a time, too. There we go. Computer. Yeah. On your lap. Yeah. Expensive. Yeah. Uh, what about wireless anything, really? Wireless speaker, wireless camera, anything wireless used to be, ooh, wow. Yeah. And it was super expensive, and hardly anyone had the hardware to actually drive that stuff wirelessly, whether it's Wi Fi or Bluetooth. And now everything is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Even that yeah. cassette thing you showed has Bluetooth now. Well, is that still gadget land or not? Look, I that when, probably fits into the description of used to be a gadget, but now it's yeah. not so much. When the first time I saw a set of uh, they were, I think they were, I, I don't know if what you guys how you pronounce it, B O S E. Do you Bose. pronounce? Bose, Bose, yeah, we, say, we yeah. say Bose as well. I've heard people say Bosey, so I just no. thought I would clarify that. But we definitely it's say It's like Bose. those weirdos that said Bondi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the very first time I saw a set of those, they were like little tiny Bluetooth speakers about this big and that they're like that deep. And the amount of volume and bass that came out of these yeah. things was breathtaking. You're like, how do they do that in something so small? Yeah. And I would definitely consider those, there was, you know, there's kind of a new wave of them. There's a lot of them available these days of these very small Bluetooth speakers, rechargeable Bluetooth speakers that sound spectacular. And I definitely would have considered them a gadget. I mean, so whether they're still a gadget, I'm not sure, but I definitely consider those to be a gadget. Um, but, uh, the, it, speaking of the the, the kind of um, wireless stuff, I mean, I, there was a gadget that I was looking at the other day that I think qualifies as a gadget, and it is uh, a security cam that screws into a standard, what is it, E27 light bulb fitting. So let's just say, I don't know, your house, you've got an outdoor light fitting or something like that. You can take the globe out and you can screw in a webcam. Now it's wireless and it, you know, and it ties into software and stuff and whatnot. But I thought that was, that's something that to me qualifies as a gadget because is it um, a replacement for a full security setup? No, but it is a security camera that someone who maybe doesn't have the time or patience to go in and set something up with cables, they can just go in and say, oh, well, here's a, a screw in light fitting. I'll just screw in the camera here and I've got some, I've got a certain level of security. I definitely consider that to be sort of a, a gadget. I use these all over the house. If I need an outlet where there isn't one, but I do have a light bulb somewhere, <laughs> you take the bulb out, put this in, voila, you got a socket. It's amazing. <laughs> Not okay. good if you want to ground it, though. <laughs> no, no, but grounding is not really a thing in this house anyway, so it's <laughs> fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, you might, you'd probably struggle with that a bit here because obviously the uh, a lot of the plugs do have that third pin, and if there's nowhere for that third pin to go, you can't plug it in. So. Yeah. 
Um, but, you can always snip it off. <laughs> yeah. What? What? Whatever bad came from that? You know? <laughs> Nothing. Um, Bruce laughs nervously as the cops approach the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Oh dear! Oh dear! Uh, um, <laughs> um, okay, so I, I'd like to mention another gadget here, and this is something which is this is not necessarily a new thing, but I feel like it has been refined. It's something like an air tag, uh, you know, like these trackers, these little personal trackers. Mm-hmm. Now they've been in the news lately because apparently some people have been using them to stalk people, or they've been using them to track lost luggage at an airport, or they're using them to, you know, stick onto a a, a, a car to track their wife to see where she goes during the day, that sort of stuff. So there's, they get a bit of bad press, some of these things, but at the end of the day, they can be an incredibly convenient little thing. Now, I first started off, I had a brand of one of these trackers and I had it, one on my keys and one in my wallet, and they were called a, like T-R-A-K-R or something like that tracker. I can't remember. But anyway. And I found it to be notoriously unreliable. So they only they worked when I was testing them, but they never worked when I actually lost something. <laughs> so uh, you know, I'd be I'd lost my keys, and I go to press it, and it's going unable to connect, unable to connect, and it's like oh. But I've I've recently bought some air tags. And when I say recently, it's over a year ago now. But I bought air tags, and I've got one again in my wallet, and I've got one attached to my keys, and I have found them to be absolutely invaluable, particularly because I am old. So I find myself just sometimes coming home and putting my keys or my wallet in the stupidest place. You know, it's like rather than plonking them into the spot that they're supposed to live, yeah. I'll put yeah. them somewhere really stupid and then you'll go to get, get them next time and then know where that you expect them to be and then just being able to grab your phone and go, you know, ping, yeah. you know, and I'll make them make a noise. Absolutely fantastic. I used to wish we had them seven years ago because – uh when my wife was pregnant, they have such a thing called pregnancy brain or uh, <laughs> mom brain. Yeah. Car keys would end up in the oven, in the fridge, <laughs> under the couch, in a planter, the weirdest places you could possibly think of. And so I got uh, a popular one here was the tile at the tile, time. Yes. And yeah. they never worked. They never freaking worked. Mm. I mean, only Apple could pull this off because it, it piggybacks off the millions of iPhones and iPads that are roaming around out there, right? Which is something that the other companies never had. So I yeah. wish I had them seven years ago. Well, they they did a test because it does two things. It does that very simple and practical thing of being able to make them make a noise if you're not sure where they are. You know, you can look at the thing and it'll say it's at your address. It's like, okay, well, no, it's in the freaking house somewhere, but where? <laughs> yeah. um, uh, but then you can make them make a noise. So it's like, you know, shh, 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 shh. And then, you know, sort of find out where they are. Um, But, of course, they have that other added advantage that once they're out and about, if you've left them somewhere, left them in a park or something, that you've got a a chance of getting them back. And they did a test um, putting the air tag up against some of the competitors like the tile, and they found that when things got lost, they were found 10 times faster with the uh, air tag simply because of the network of Apple devices Mm -hmm. in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, that they all, you know, serve to help. You know, it's all all the stuff's all private, but they help to serve this kind of network. And I mean, don't they even have some sort of basic cell connection or something? I'm not sure. I, I could be wrong. I'm not sure on that. I do know that the newer phones. This, this may only be for the for the AirPods or the AirPods, but if you're trying to find it, you look at your phone screen and it has like a compass to kind of yeah. guide you to it. Yeah. That that is amazing. I've never used yeah. that. Before. Yeah. Yeah, I, I used that once just to, uh, just to experiment and see what it was like, and it was a little bit flaky. It is a bit gimmicky to me. That didn't really seem like a fully practical way of finding something. The, just having them make the noise, I think, was far more efficient. Yeah, the um, noise helps, definitely, uh, unless you lose something. And I, had, I, had, I bought uh, a four-pack of those uh, AirTags, and a few of them hmm. were unused. And I lost them. I don't know where I put them. Uh, so I tried to find them. <laughs> I had connected them to my phone already. I just never used them. So press the button. Blink, 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 blink. I hear it. Okay, let's go. Wait, I hear it in every room of the house. 
How is that possible? <laughs> Turns out that the cat knocked it off the table. It ended up in the AC vent and thus was <laughs> equally loud in every room of the house. <laughs> Throw me like insane. <laughs> um, okay. Now, I'm just going to take this now into this. We'll finish this up fairly soon, but I want to just sort of take this into, um, let's call it, a you know, the, the world of science fiction. And Now, I often have this idea of imagine if you could take a modern-day iPhone, travel back in time to, say, the 1980s and show it to someone and say, look at this, someone who is just getting started on an old 1980s microcomputer and say, this is the future of computing. Have a look at this device. Uh, you you know, it would be absolutely amazing. And to some extent, that's where the whole, you know, um, science fiction versus fact is, is always very interesting. And mm -hmm. I I thought we, would we could just take a little bit, uh, a bit of a moment exploring things that in the past have maybe been in a movie that were um, – just pure science fiction that have now actually come to pass. We have something the same or similar to what we would have seen um, sort of in, you know, in, in a science fiction, you know, sort of futuristic type format. So um, I guess, you know, I think things like if we take, say, maybe the most basic, and if you took it, look at something like Star Trek, which is, I know, Jay's favourite show, the very original Star Trek series, the ones with, you know, um, Bill Schatz, um, he had... Bill and Leo. <laughs> he had... Uh, um, they had communicators when they were landing on a planet somewhere. They flipped the thing open and talk into them. And, of course, the yeah. way things are now with, uh, with cell phones, uh, you could easily say, well, yeah, that's something that has, has definitely uh, come true. Um, now, admittedly, well, they... Has it, though? Most, <laughs> most yeah. of the uh, has... <laughs> cell phones were actually, they flipped open just like the old communicators. Yeah, yeah. Most yep. of them today don't. But um, no. how did they uh, how did they handle the roaming the intergalactic roaming charges? <laughs> well, thing? look because to some if extent, I want to call Canada, I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah, I mean they were probably those communicators were probably a little bit more like a satellite phone than they were like a yeah. cell phone because they weren't yeah. working off cell tower. They were communicating directly with the ship. So in that regard, I suppose we're still a little bit of a way away from that because satellite phones are still pretty darn clunky. But uh, um, but yeah, it's, it's the Jeff the idea idea of actually having holding some method of communication in your hand uh, to talk to someone potentially you know like someone on the other side of the planet you know it's still a pretty uh, pretty amazing thing and that's yeah. definitely I mean uh, look at what we're doing right now I know you know, here, here on streamyard I'm in another country I know yeah. Yeah. yeah now what about talking cars I mean Knight Rider was cool and the car had an attitude but now it's common for your car to talk to you when you don't want it my car doesn't talk to me. My bloody phone does all the freaking time. <laughs> Wasn't talking to you, Siri. Shut up. <laughs> um, okay, who has a talking car? I don't have a talking car. I do. Yeah. Do when the tire pressure is low or, you know, something's wow. going on. It, it actually awesome. says that. It says tire pressure is low. If you ignore the dashboard too long, it just starts yelling at you. Yeah. <laughs> You must have a fancy Mazda. No, I don't. I got the sport edition, which means you don't even get an automatic transmission. <laughs> oh, I'd hate that. I try I tried to I tried to get an automatic. My wife's like, no, I want manual. It's faster, it's better. But no, it's not. But we got it anyway. It'll last longer. Yeah, I just I'm I'm too lazy. I mean, I, I grew up with with um, manual vehicles, but I'm too lazy yeah. now. I just I love automatic transmission. If if it's not powerful enough, just get a bigger engine. You know. Yep. So. What else? <sighs> uh, you said virtual reality. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. you know, I, I guess virtual reality is uh, is is something that has got. I mean. Uh, I think it was probably in the 90s there was a um, a nightclub that I used to go to every now yeah. and then. And at the nightclub they had this virtual reality game that you uh -huh. could play while you were there. And you would stand in this little enclosure type thing and then you could right. walk around and, I don't know, shoot each other or something. I never used it. But, yeah. um, but then I recently used a virtual reality game at a friend's place the other day and was absolutely blown oh, away. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. 
Now, I would still classify it as a gadget today. I don't think it's become mainstream quite yet. But like, like you were saying, in the 90s, I remember when I was in college, they had a traveling exhibit come to the local mall. And they said, we have a virtual reality a gaming system and you went and you stood in the middle of this circle and had like a, like a handlebar around. Yep. That's what I except for the back yeah. where you walk in. And then you had this big thing that you wore and it was wired up to the system. None of it was wireless. And you stood inside this like concave. Is that the word? Oh, where is yeah, mm-hmm. reverse yep. of a, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and when you walked, it would roll. So you could actually walk and it would just keep like moving. You didn't actually have to stand in place. Um, but then <laughs> the game was all wireframe. And so yeah. you're thinking of like lawnmower man, oh, virtual reality is going to be full 3D. And no. <laughs> but uh, but nowadays it's it's definitely a gadget because you can buy a system and plug it into your computer or your TV at home and 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 just do it in your living room. And they can render, you know, they render both left and right eyes, so you're getting, yeah. a, you know, real simulated depth percep- perception. Full 3D graphics. Um, I feel Absolutely. sorry for people to get motion sickness because they just get into <laughs> yeah. these things and they get sick as. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I definitely consider, you know, I'm thinking of things like the holodeck on on Star Trek. Yeah. Okay, we're not at that level yet, but right. it, it definitely is that. That's what I'm waiting level. for. <laughs> like if I, like. Let's go visit my mom, you know. Zoom, you're there. Zoom, mm. you're back. And there's all the, uh, I think it was Star Wars track, one of the two. They're <laughs> like, oh, I want a cup of tea. And the machine just manufactures a cup that of was, tea for yeah. you. That yeah. was Star Trek, yeah. So that was the. Um, How much lasagna yeah. I would eat. <laughs> my God. <laughs> well, here's an interesting thing for you. Um, I'm just taking this out <laughs> on a whole different level here. Um <laughs> You know the the transporter in uh, in uh, whatever they called it in Star Trek. What they could just call it a transporter. Transporter, yeah. transporter yeah. yeah. So essentially, what it does, it breaks down all of your atoms, puts it, you know, sends it up into the spaces, and then puts you back together again. Yeah. Now, someone it's has pointed out, information. Someone has actually pointed out that the moment you actually deconstruct your body at an atomic level, you're dead. Mm-hmm. You no longer yeah. exist. They yeah. put you back together again. You are you're recreated with all of the same memories of the person you were before, but you are effectively a new person that just has the same yeah. memories as that other person. And you did actually die the moment you got beamed up. Are we really going down this road? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like the like the the virtual reality. Uh, my my friend got an Oculus something. I don't know. You got different models. He got an yeah. Oculus. Completely yeah. wireless, works off his phone. It's incredible. Uh, he mm-hmm. uses it. He wanted to start working out. So he has this boxing program, and he is he dumps like half his body weight in a few months. He's active all the time. Like it can be a real benefit. Uh, so it's pretty cool. I don't have one myself. I tried it out. Uh, it's not really for me, but it, it can be really awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, of course, the one that has to be mentioned, has to get an honourable mention, has got to be Dick Tracy's watch. Um, Now, admittedly, no one has actually made a watch that is as cool as Dick Tracy's. It didn't have a little aerial that came out of it. Yeah. And it had a little little grill, like a speaker grill on the front. Yeah. And the little, you know, I mean, how cool was that? I would love something. You can do FaceTime from your Apple Watch now, can't you? No. I don't know. Audio. You can do audio. audio. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, who is Dick Tracy? <laughs> Google it. It's a comic book. It was a he was a he was a comic book detective in the forties, I think, thirties and forties. Uh, um, and he had all kinds of. Yeah, he was James Bond before there was James Bond. I see. And he fought mobsters, and all the mobsters were big caricatures like prune face dude has a face was all wrinkled up like one of those dogs um yeah it, it was it was neat and they made a movie about it in the 80s um, with madonna with madonna and uh warren Beatty. yeah yeah so yeah. 
bad. Um, it's terrible. Don't watch it. Um, so <laughs> I it was very stylized. It was very much a live action version of the comic book. I, you know, I kind of got a kick out of it, but I was a kid. So, <laughs> and then I think we also should mention um, Maxwell Smart's shoe phone, because although we aren't using our shoes to talk to people, I mean we are walking around with portable phones in our pockets all the time. So yeah. I feel like the shoe phone should definitely get an honourable mention. Um, Wouldn't that suck? Every time you want to order Uber, you got to take your shoe off. And, <laughs> Hold on, gosh. <laughs> you got your Timberlands laced yeah. up to. <laughs> yeah. and, and you have no, like, no caller ID on it. So it's just like someone selling you advertising. Yeah, you know, someone just advertising <laughs> to you. It's like, oh, I took my five shoe off. Minutes back. Taking my shoe off for that. <laughs> I think an example uh, of a gadget that, well, it's not quite a gadget yet but it will become a gadget and then it will probably become commonplace is wearable tech. Oh like, yeah. Like the Dick Tracy type watch or the, the, what was it? The OLED or you know, that was a, that was that mission to Mars movie or whatever it was. And he had like a, 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 a bracer on his arm and it had all the computer stuff in it. And mm, yeah, was, yep. you know, wearable tech. They're already the, talking the, about embedding certain things into clothes that give you better reception or whatever. But the, what about those glasses? The the Google had some, and then I didn't Ray Ban make glass. some. Yeah, yeah, that that have like cameras and and heads mm -hmm. up display inside them and stuff like that. I forget. What I, ca I kind of already use wearable tech. I have gloves that have little heat heating elements in them. There you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my dad has a jacket that that has a battery in it, and it heats the jacket when he's outside in the winter. Cool. Yeah. It's sucking some of that. That'd be odd. Yeah. Um, and I should. We should have. We haven't even mentioned this at all. But we should again. Just honourable mention. Drones. Drones are a gadget. Yes. Yeah. And I. Definitely. I totally appreciate that. For some people, drones are part of their business. If they're doing mm. real estate photography or something like that, mm -hmm. they probably feel a little less gadgety for them. But I definitely consider drones to be a gadget. Um, and for a lot of people. For most people that own a drone, um, they're not really fulfilling any practical purpose. Yeah, Maybe getting some nice photography when they go on holidays or something. Uh, I have a few friends that, are, that have drones and uh, they use it for uh, uh, train spotting and stuff, like getting cool angles of trains that pass through. But the regulations have cracked down so much. You can't yeah. fly here. You have to stay... Below a certain altitude, there and it's yep. just, it's and you have to be away. Anymore. You've got to be away uh, a certain distance away from people. I mean, this yeah. is the thing. I mean, if you if yeah. you want to take yours, even if you want to take it to fly in a park somewhere, if you're too close to people, you can't use it. So you can't fly it over plane uh, train derailments. I mean, I am a, <laughs> I am a strong I am a strong believer that something like drones need to be regulated because, you know, you can't just be in a situation where people are just flying around a drone in your – a neighbour is flying a drone around in your backyard and you're powerless to do anything about it. Uh, Jay, I see you have something queued up to show us all here. <laughs> yes, because I wanted to bring up real quick, and the only way I know how is with a 3D printer, but making your own gadgets. Like, mm -hmm. this gadget opens up a world – to other gadgets you never had before. And this is my favorite at the moment. We play a lot of board games. And the best part of playing board games that involve dice is for my seven-year-old to whack them around the room and have everybody look for them. <laughs> this fixes that. And Ooh. it's the best print I've done to date. The, it has little magnets in it. You, you spin the damn thing. And it's a little video. It has magnets in it so that it yeah. Locks into position. How awesome so, is that? That is pretty yeah. awesome. But I just I want I'm gonna have to say this. I, I'm sorry, Jay, if you haven't thought of this. Um <laughs> there is a dice rolling app on a phone you can use. Yeah, we, we try to get away from screen time when we are at the uh, table. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I can understand. But yeah, this is just one example, but what kind of gadgets can you make yourself? It doesn't have to be, I mean, this is tech chat, so we're kind of limited by to techy stuff, but what what kind yeah. of gadgets can you make yourself? Well, it's the only issue I have with this question is I haven't given it any thought. 
Well, let's Sorry. just cut this bitch out then. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> um, so I'm now, right this moment, um, thinking about what uh, gadgets I can uh, make. Um, like these, uh, uh, what do you call them? Fidget spinners that are really popular. You can make those yourself with a bearing and a few weights. I- I did make one of those. I will say that I did make a, a fidget spinner um, just for fun. It's more. It was more of a test because it's got interlocking gears, so it's more of a test to see how accurate your printer is to, to yeah. build something like this. Yeah, I tried that one too. I just had one blob of plastic. <laughs> didn't spin it off. <laughs> well, you can try it again now. Your printer yeah, is working okay. yeah, fine. Yeah, fine. <laughs> um, right. Well, unless anyone has anything else to add. Let me check the notes. Nope, nothing. We covered it. Great. Well, I think we've uh, we've been going for quite a while, so I think this is probably enough for a show. Um, so if you have been watching this, once again, our apologies. Um, please <laughs> leave... Uh, please leave comments in the chat. We would like to hear about your favorite gadgets. We would like to hear about what you consider to be a gadget and what not to be a gadget. Uh, we want your opinions on gadgets. As Whatever opinions yeah. you might have, please drop them into the chat or into the comments. Comments, this isn't live. Drop it into the mm-hmm. comments um, and uh, let us know about it. We would really like to know what your thoughts on, uh, on gadgets are. Um, I would like to... You know, sincerely thank you for watching. I mean, we are up to episode eight, eight, eight. eight already. Eight. Who would eight. have thought? <clears throat> they said we'd never make it, um, and they were. They, wrong. M- they might still be right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so, Dana, thank you very much for being part of today's show. Yes, <laughs> Jay. Jay? <laughs> Thank you very much for almost being part of today's show. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> um, we do hope to see your face again soon um, once it's back to normal. Um, so, uh, yeah. We Stop will, yeah the, the bottle of spray tan said had a biohazard symbol on it, so it might take a little while to wear off. Might take a little while? Okay. <laughs> yeah. No worries. We'll, be, we'll keep waiting. We'll keep waiting. All right. Okay. Well, that is it for another episode of Startup Disk Gears Full Tech Chat. Uh, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Please like. Please subscribe. Please tell your friends about it. Tell them it is the best show ever. They don't need to know it's not. We just want them to watch it. Yep. So have a lovely one. Hope to see you at the next episode. And... Thanks to you guys, and see you next time. Bye. Why am I waving? Wave. Jay, Jay, wave. <laughs> He's waving. I what? <laughs> He's doing this. Hi there. Uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'll be right back. I think the cat just threw up somewhere. <laughs> Run your vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Do you think he's going to clean up? Do you think he's going to I don't know. Up? Do you reckon he's just going to observe where it is and like I don't know, stick a stick a little. That's what I do. It. I just put a paper towel over it so that no one steps in it and then clean it later. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> ah, sorry, my voice is giving out. It's uh, going to take me so fucking long to cut out all of the <laughs> throat clearing. <laughs> <laughs> um, we might as well rename the show at this point. Because this is the eighth episode where we introduce ourselves as Tech Chat. I know, I say Startup Disk is full Tech Chat. Look at the logo. Startup Disk is full yeah. Tech Chat. That's right there. Yeah, but that's not the name. Startup Disk is full Tech Chat. I didn't make it. You're yelling at me. <laughs> oh, I'm in space and my arms are. <laughs> Your limbs are disappearing. <laughs>